So the book of Numbers chapter, chapter 9, beginning with verse 15, reading from the New Living Translation of the Scriptures, the word of the Lord is as follows. On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern at night. The cloud that covered the tabernacle had the appearance of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. Then they remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days. So the people would stay for only a few days as the Lord commanded. Then at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning. But day or night, when the cloud lifted, the people broke camp and moved on. Whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days, a month, or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. But as soon as it lifted, they broke camp and moved on. So they camped or traveled at the Lord's command, and they did whatever the Lord told them through Moses. Thus far, the word of the Lord. As we continue to press into the images of this COVID-19 season, we continue with the first one being that of wilderness wandering. On last Sunday, we learned that our time in the wilderness should give us some certain insights about God as the God who preserves, who maximizes, and who demonstrates his singularity as being our God. Those are wonderful things to know about God at any time of our lives. And while this is so, an honest believer will admit that the wilderness still can be unnerving and disconcerting. Part of what makes the wilderness experience so troubling is the ambiguity, the uncertainty, and the feeling as if you're going around in circles will never end. There is a lack of clarity around exactly where you're going or more where you'll end up. There is a not knowing of how much longer it will be and how much longer you can take. There is this dis-ease around a lack of progress. Not much appears to change. You look and you see the same issues, the same challenges, the same people, and the same problems. And for somebody, if you're honest, you'll admit that there is a restlessness. There is a boredom. In your mind, there is the thought that if you don't see a change in surrounding soon, you just might lose it. Someone is feeling that right now. If you, if you have to be in that house much longer without any type of variety of environment, you just might go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. If I might say parenthetically, whenever you feel like your life is a perpetual groundhog day, when nothing external to you is changing, you might need to understand that maybe you're missing the point of this phase of your life. That maybe, maybe the point of this phase, that phase, is not things changing, it's you changing. It's not about things improving, it's about you improving. It's not about whether a condition shifts or somebody else shifts, it's about whether or not you shift. 
the 40 years of the people wandering in the wilderness, seeing the same things, going the same ways, was due to God doing a work in them. God was weeding out the generation that doubted him prior to the wandering, and God was growing the new generation that would inhabit the land of promise. While nothing was changing in their physical environment, much was changing in whom they were becoming as a people. Could it be that God is seeking to do the same thing with America in general and with you in particular? Could it be that God is saying this season will last as long as it takes for God to weed out what needs to be gone and to grow what needs to be matured? For 40 years, the people of God would wander in the wilderness. Day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year of the same old thing, all the while not knowing when things would change, how long it would take, and where they would end up. And they would do so because the wilderness is not about knowing any of those things. It's about getting to know God. Friends, can I say this? The wilderness isn't about the excitement of your life, the entertainment of your life, the enjoyment of your life, the variety of your life, the pace of your life, or the destination of your life. The wilderness is all about the God of your life. And my brothers and sisters, where there is uncertainty about the pulse, pace, and path of life, the one thing about which you should be certain is the person and presence of God. And so as we dealt with wilderness insights on last Sunday, we want to deal with wilderness certainty that God wants you to have. For, for the 40 years in the wilderness, the people had a particular experience of God. One year in this text has passed since the people of God departed from Egypt. Camping within the shadows of Mount Sinai, God has instructed Moses on his desires for the people in terms of how they are to live and how they are to worship. He has set the standards for their walk as well as their worship with painstaking detail. Everything about them, including how the various tribes are ordered and positioned in the camp, has all been directed by God through Moses. That is to say, not the tribes don't camp where they want to camp. They camp as they've been directed by God to camp because God has a position in mind for each tribe as it relates to where they are around the tabernacle. And the chief instruction that God gave Moses was, was the instruction of how to build the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the portable tent of meeting, which housed the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the, the commandments, those, those tablets, they, a bowl of manna and Aaron's rod that budded. It contains also the outer chamber that, that had the seven branch lamp stand and the table for the, for the showbread for the priests and the, and the altar of incense. They were surrounded by an enclosure where the altar of sacrifice was. The tabernacle was set in the midst of the camp to embody the presence of God in the midst of God's people. And the text says that, that on the day that the tabernacle was set up, a cloud covered it. Now, this was no ordinary cloud. This was the Lord's cloud. It was what, what scholars call a theophany. That is, it was a physical manifestation of the presence of the Almighty God. And while it appeared simply as a cloud during the day, it would appear as fire during the night. This was the regular pattern when whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people broke camp and they followed it. And whenever it settled, they would set up their camp. That was their experience for 40 plus years. 
For those years, God was impressing the primacy of his presence among his people. His presence among them was more important than where they were going, when they were going, and how fast they were going. Because in the midst of anxiety about pulse, period, and path of life, God seeks to bring us to a place of certainty about his presence. There, 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 there's some things that, that God is trying to impress upon the people of God during this season in terms of how certain you can be about him. And so the first thing that I, that I see in, in this passage is God shows himself as he needs to be seen. God shows himself as he needs to be seen with the tabernacle being set up during the day. The presence of the Lord descends in the form of a cloud. Clouds are easily seen during the day. You readily can recognize their formations and their shapes during the day. But then as day gives way to night, what was easily and readily recognizable suddenly begins to fade. God desiring not to be obscured by night, this God whose presence was seen as cloud by day illumines the night as a pillar of fire. It's the same presence of God, but, but God refuses to be obscured by anything. God wants to be seen by God's people. And therefore, God reveals himself to them such that they can see him among them. Friends, God makes himself known in ways that he needs to be seen. He makes his presence known in ways that can be recognizable to us and that there is no environment where God cannot make himself known. That is to say, God is not locked into one form, one shape, or one appearance. He is God in the cloud, and he's God in the fire. He is equally God. He is God in the day, and he is God in the evening. He is no more God when it is light, and he is no less God when in darkness. He is equally God. God at all times and he wanted them to know and be sure that he is equally God among them regardless of the time and season. The same is true for you and for me. Certainty in the presence of God is one that recognizes that God is always God. He's equally God in day and in night. And God will show himself as he needs to be seen depending upon the situation. He knows when he needs to be cloud and he knows when he needs to be fire. He knows when he needs to be seen as healer and when he needs to be seen as provider. He, he knows when he needs to be seen as disruptor and he knows when he needs to be seen as comforter. He, he is present as he needs to be Present. And, and the good thing is the promise of God's presence is this. He will show enough of himself for you to know that he's there. It may not be every way that you desire or it may not be in the particular way that you would expect. But it will be what God knows is the best way for you to know that he is there. As the I am that I am, God is who he is. And he is who he needs to be, whoever he needs to be. He is that. And I believe that's why somebody has been able to give God a hallelujah anyhow. Because God has been exactly who and what he's needed to be with you. And you can just tweet at this point, God has been that. As a matter of fact, somebody can say, God has been all that everything that I've needed, God has been. God, God will show himself as he needs 
to be seen. Now, 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 here's the thing about God as pillar of cloud by day and fire by night because God, God, God is so much God that God says, I'm not only going to show up so that you'll know that I'm there, but I'm going to show up so that you'll know the benefits of my presence. What does, what does a cloud do during daytime for people wandering in the wilderness? The cloud provides shadow. And when you are in the wilderness, in a dry and arid place, when the sun is beating down on you and you don't have, my God, an umbrella, you get some shade from the cloud. The cloud, the cloud keeps you, my God, from dehydrating and getting sunstroke. God, God says, I'm not just going to let you see me, but I'm going to let you know the benefit of my presence as cloud by day. I'm able to shade you from what might destroy you. And I wonder, is there anybody, my God, who just got an email from God saying, that's why you haven't been destroyed because I've been your cloud by day. I've been your shade. I've been your, I've been your covering. You're able now to better understand what it means that when the psalmist says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord has been your cloud by day, and he has given you shadow and protection. But, but, but notice, notice, notice the switch now during the night. A pillar of fire by night. What do we know about, about desert living, about, about wanderers wandering in wildernesses? We, we know how quickly the temperature can change. That what is extremely hot during the day because the beating of the rays of the sun quickly turns cold during the night. Ah, yes, 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 yes. But God says, I show up as a pillar of fire, not just so they can see me, but so that they can be warmed by me, just as I don't want them to die out because of sunstroke and dehydration. I don't want them to die because of hypothermia. I don't want them to die because things are too cold. I'm, I'm going to be a pillar of fire by night. They won't just see me, but they will feel the warmth of my presence, and they will, they will know the benefit of me being there in the midnight hour. I wonder, is there someone who can, te who can testify that part of the reason why I've been saying hallelujah anyhow is because there have been a whole lot of nights in my life in this season, but God has shown up as a pillar of fire, and I've been able to feel the warmth of his presence. Every time my soul, my God, would be tempted to grow cold, my God, and, and unfeeling, the Lord shows up with the pillar of fire and, be, and, and allows me to feel the warmth of his presence. He shows up as he needs to be seen. But notice, notice something else about the presence of God. God's presence sets the pulse, periods, and paths of life. God's presence sets the pulse, periods, and paths of life. Listen, listen to verse 17. It begins, whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of the Lord would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. Then they remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days, so the people would stay for only a few days as the Lord commanded. Then at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed over only overnight and lifted the next morning, but day or night, when the cloud lifted, the people broke camp 
and moved on. And whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days, a month, or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. But as soon as it lifted, they broke camp and moved on. There are three key words in that passage that we're going to be lifting out. The first is whenever. Whenever. It, it, it reads, whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people would break camp and follow it. Verse 18 then reads, they remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the camp. The timing, the, the pace of the people's journey was set by the Lord's presence. When the presence lifted, they moved. When the presence stopped, they settled. Both their movement and their settlement was set by the Lord. They moved as quickly as the presence lifted, and they stopped as immediately as the presence settled. Friends, the Lord sets the pulse of our lives. And there are times when there is movement and there are times when there is settlement. And both movement and settlement are the Lord's doing. In this time of extended settlement, have you been able to see it as the Lord? Have you been able to look at this extended time of staying in place and say, this is the Lord's doing? We are, we are so prone to see movement and activity as the Lord's presence and stillness and settlement as the Lord's absence. And notice, I did, I did not ask you, do you see COVID-19 as the Lord's doing? No. Do you see the time of settling down as the Lord's doing? And there, there, is, there, is, there is a difference. We say God works all things together for the good of those who, who love him and are the called according to his purpose. Do you see the Lord using this COVID-19 season and the settling that has come as a result of it. Do you see this as the Lord's doing? The text reveals that both times of movement and settlement are the Lord. They are equally the Lord. The Lord whose presence prompts movement is also the Lord whose presence prompts settlement. And whatever the pace, whatever the pulse may be, if it's being guided by his presence, it's what is needed for that time. In, in, in other words, there, there is no amount of protest that can change the rhythm or season that God has set to move or to stop. The pulse is set by him. And what the text shows us is as immediately as you must start with God, you must also stop with God. But it gets deeper. It gets deeper. It's not just the pulse of starts and stops. It's also the periods of time. The, the text tells us that they remained in their camp as long as the cloud would stay over the tabernacle. And sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days. So the people would stay for only a few days as the Lord commanded. Then at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning. Whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle, it reads for two days, a month, or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. The first word was Whenever the second word is whether, it speaks to however long the time. There were times when they were moved day after day, but there were other times when it was two days, a month, or even a year. However long it was, the text reads, they remained 
where they were because the God who is God was in their midst. And their lives were centered around his presence. They dare not move away from his presence, even if it meant staying longer in a place than they wanted. As long as he was stationary, they remained stationary. Now, this is a problem for those of us who have an impatience issue. Because we want things to happen faster and shorter. We get nervous when they are slower and longer. And as such, we are tempted to equate the fast and the short with God and the slow and long as not God. We are prone to question life when life is slow and long or even more, even worse, when life isn't moving at all. But the text reminds us that our lives are not about time frames or schedules. They are about the purposes that God has established and God directs by his presence. And when life is not moving, the presence of God and the purposes for that time must be enough for us. In fact, in fact, when, when it seems like life is not moving, the purposes of God are to be pursued. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 reads, if the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, hear the words, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Wow. Wow. When they were put on a stay order, they occupied their time in a particular way. They performed their duty to the Lord. Other translations read, they kept the charge of the Lord. They fulfilled the tasks that God assigned. They did not waste the time. They did not use the time of delay as an excuse to forsake their charge. No, they fulfilled their charge. They, they made their time full by serving the Lord. Here, here's the diagnostic question. How much of this time has been given to what the Lord desires of you? How much of this time has been given in keeping the direction that the Lord has given. How, how much time has been, sent, has been spent pursuing the plans that God has for you? Because, friends, the, the stays and delays in the wilderness are opportunities to demonstrate faithfulness to the God who has remained faithful to you. The God who is faithful sets times and seasons for you to show how much of him is in you. You see, this is a, is a, is a, is a time not, not just for showing how much uh, uh, of, of God you have, but, but this is a time of showing how much of God is in you. How, how much of God's character is displayed and demonstrated through you and, and by you because the presence of God with you however long you are where you are will challenge you to keep your eyes on God for however long it is. It, it challenges you and me to pay attention to him for however long it is, to seek his will for however long it is, to, to because I don't want to waste a moment of settlement nor miss a moment of movement. I've got to pay attention to him because 
was, if you read that carefully, it says that whenever the cloud lifted, night or day, they would move when he moved, which means in my time of delay, I don't have time to stop looking at God because I might miss the cloud lift and my time to move. However long God decides for the season because God is with me in the season, I want to keep his charge. I want to keep watch. I, I've got to look out for his will and for his way. Why don't you why don't you just tweet to somebody and say, keep the charge, keep the charge, keep the charge. But listen, listen, whenever speaks to God's setting the pulse, whether speaks to God setting the periods. But there is a third word, and that word is wherever. Look again at verses 17 and 18. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. The people followed the pillar wherever it went. And they settled wherever it stopped. They stayed wherever it remained. Because the God whose presence established their pulse and their periods is also the God whose presence established their paths. God set their itinerary. Their places of movement and settlement were set by him. He knew where they needed to go, when they needed to get there, and how long they needed to stay there. And therefore, they went wherever he led them, whenever he led them, and stayed for however long he had them. Because for them, it was better to be wherever he was, whenever he was, for however long he desired. Wilderness certainty is certainty in the presence of God setting the pulse, the periods, and the paths of your life. The certainty of Israel was that they were headed, where they were headed was what God had in mind. What they would receive was what God had in mind. Whom they would become was what God had had in mind and at best they had an open-ended trust in the presence of God that moved when God moved stopped when God stopped and stayed for as long as God stayed and I believe that what God is seeking in you and me during this season is this certainty that, that, that is displayed by an open-ended trust in God. It is an open-ended trust in God where, here it is, you are comfortable with a single certainty, God. It is to be certain of the presence and the sufficiency of God's presence for any time and any season. It is to know that you know that you know that God in, in the daylight is equally the God in your darkness. And whether there is sunshine or no light at all, God is with you setting the pulse and the periods and the paths. That he is God in your starts. He's God in your starts stops and he's God in your stays. He's good in the starts and he's good in the stops and he's good in the stays. He's faithful in the starts. He's faithful in the stops and he's faithful in the stays. I wonder am I talking to anyone with wilderness certainty that in this COVID-19 season you know who God is. He is who he is. He is who he needs to be and you've seen him in the beauty of 
of the day and you've seen him in the darkness of the night. You've seen him in the joy at daybreak and you've seen him in the trials of the midnight hour. He's been the God of your progression and he's been the God in your pauses. Regardless of the time, you know that God wants what's best and he knows what's best and he sees what's best and he has what's best and he's working what's best and he's producing what's best and he's providing what's best and therefore you're persuaded to follow him in every start in every step and in every stay you are persuaded to trust him in every start in every stop and in every stay and the reason why you can say hallelujah anyhow is you are persuaded to praise him in every start and in every stop and in every stay it was that certainty that not only drives you not only drove Israel but it was that type of certainty that drove Jesus it was a trust in every start in every stop and in every stay it guided him as an infant being taken from Bethlehem down into Egypt and staying there until the death of the Herod that wanted to kill him had occurred and then he returned to Nazareth where he stayed on the wraps until year 30 when he appears to John at the Jordan River look at Jesus in his own wilderness do you see Jesus fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness do you see his reliance upon the presence and purpose of God when he is tempted of the devil my God do you see him always going back to God by saying man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God the Father do you hear him when he says my thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God do you hear him say thou shalt love the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve the father was the one who set the pulse and the period and the path of his life his meat was to do the will of him that sent him he lived with a sense of the periods that the father has said when Mary talks about the wine running out Jesus says I live by periods and I recognize that this is not the period for the full manifestation my God of who I am to be shown that's why he says my hour has not yet come because Jesus recognized that the pulse and the periods and paths of his life was set by God and even when the path was dark and even when the path was frightening and even when the path was dreadful Jesus still yielded to the path that God had for him when he said nevertheless not my will but thy will be done even when the path led to Calvary he hung there as long as it took for him my God to bear the sins of the world upon himself he hung there as long as it took to take on every ordinance and every judgment that stood against the people of God he hung there as long as it took for the full wrath of God to be poured out upon him he hung there as long as it took and when it was over he said it is finished and he hung his head and died he remained in the grave long enough to take the keys of death and hell and when that period was over early Sunday morning God raised him from the dead with all power in his hand he's ascended in the heaven and he sits at the right hand of the throne of God where he's making intercession on behalf of us all and he's staying there until the father who has set all times and seasons in his own power decides that it's time to send Jesus back and when that time comes the Lord himself will descend with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain will be called up to meet them in the air. God sets the pulse and God sets the periods and God sets the paths of our lives and I can't talk for anybody else but I just want to thank God for being the God who has been present in my life I just want to thank God for the certainty I've had of his presence I want to thank God that in the dry times of my life in the dark times of my life in the dreary times of my life in the dismal times of my life in the dreadful times of my life the Lord has been with me he's been with me as a cloud that shaded me and he's been with me as fire that has comforted
comforted me and encouraged me. I'm so glad that there's never been a time in my life where God has been absent. But every day the Lord has walked with me and the Lord has talked with me and the Lord has told me that I am his own. I know that's an old fashioned song, but when you've lived and you've had ups and downs and you've had ins and outs and you've had good times and bad times, you can shout out for the fact that God has always been by your side, that God has been with you, that God has not left you and that God has been equally God and that God has been enough. God has been more than enough. And is there anybody who can say, I am assured in my Savior. I'm assured in God. I'm assured in every start. I'm assured in every stop. I'm assured in every stage. Somebody is getting better now. My God, your anxiety is lowering because you're understanding that God is with you even though you're in a stay period. Even though things have stopped. Even though nothing has moved. You're being strengthened right now. You're being encouraged right now. You're being lifted right now. You're being elevated right now. And you can make up in your mind. I'll go. I'll follow where he leads. His hand I trust completely. He can lead me and where he leads me I'll go. I wonder is there anybody here who can say I'm persuaded that that's the type of God I have. And that's the type of God I'm following. I'm certain in this God. I'm assured in this God. I may not know anything else. I just know God is with me. When, when, when things go open up, I don't know. I just know God is with me. When things are going to turn around, I don't know. I just know God. God is with me. When am I going to get some good news? I don't know. I just know God is with me. And I know that God is, is leading me. And I, I, I've just made up my mind. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him. How about you?